And welcome back to the Popcorn Conspiracy on CentralCoastRadio.com. Now, we are taking a look at one of the weirdest films that you are probably going to see uh, this year. It's from director Ari Aster, and the film is called Bo is Afraid. Now, this film starts off um, with a character called Bo Wasserman, played by Wakan Phoenix. Um, He has severe anxiety to the point where the world around him is a very, very scary place. And add to that the fact that things seem to happen to him that are completely strange and, and completely weird. And you can kind of understand why Bo doesn't even like going outside anymore. However, he has a little bit of an issue because he is expected to travel and go see his mother. Um, he has to go out into the world and take a plane trip to go see his mother he psychs himself up to do it but then everything goes awry when he is about to leave to go see his mother from then on i think it's fair to say that we probably shouldn't spoil too much about what goes on (laughs) after that point um because that's the journey of the film but from there things get very very strange indeed now mate i know we were sitting in the cinema and when the A24 logo came up, I said to you, <laughs> it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. Because for yeah. some reason I find with A24, I either really love the film or I don't like the film at all. But this one, I think actually threw me a little bit of a curveball. but I'm going to start off by asking, what did you think of Bo is Afraid? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, that's the thing. A, A24 films, they, they always... Yeah, they seem to be the five out of five films or sometimes one out of five films. Um, I think I, I do appreciate that they seem to give filmmakers carte blanche to basically make whatever kind of film that they want to make. And a lot of the time that that can really pay off things like, um, yeah, like like uh, X and and Pearl, where those that that entire franchise is just because they they gave the filmmaker the the freedom to make whatever kind of movie he wanted to do um i i i hadn't seen uh hereditary but i had seen ari Ari aster's um last film midsummer and loved it and so i was really excited to see this what he was uh describing as like an epic nightmare comedy um like it starts off really interesting. Like there's there's these blurred lines between the real world and Bo's nightmare world. Like we're seeing the world in the same way that he sees it, um, with all of his mental illnesses and hysterics and and neuroses and um and phobias. Like it it feels like a real world, but like there's some there's just some kind of um uh like uh the unreliable narrator stuff going on and so it it was a really interesting film like at at the beginning and really funny in a lot of places it it, for a large part um i thought it it was kind of like a, a cross between wes anderson and david lynch um like their films like with wes anderson's uh quirkiness and humor but and I guess David Lynch's humor as well with, with uh, the darkness and fear and extreme violence of um, David Lynch movies. And, but also the the horror of David Lynch movies as well. So it was a very interesting film, but very, very easy to, um, I think very easy to get into and very easy to just, to just let flow over you like even though it's all weird even though you've got no idea what's going on with it uh it it was very easy to just let the let the experience just flow over you and and to just um to just uh to just experience it i guess and like the cast are great as well like Hawkwind phoenix um he's playing kind of a similar type of role to what he does in the joker but much more docile and childlike innocent character like there's a lot of parts in this where like he really is playing like the ultimate man child kind of character like where the the problems that he has because of how his mother has raised him he really is not an adult he really is not a grown-up he has just been he, he's like just a a, a, a middle-aged boy and i thought it was really interesting like uh it, it was really interesting really um it, uh 
uh, really funny film for about half the runtime. And this is a problem that I know a lot of people are going to have. And uh, I know that a lot of, a lot of film critics had at the, the screen that we saw uh, for about half the runtime. It's fine to just experience and just let the weirdness just wash over you. But uh, I mean, I was even thinking while watching it, I was thinking, hey, I'd like to go see this in IMAX because it, it's it's playing in IMAX in a limited run. And I don't often think that with media screenings. Um, but at a, certain time, uh, at a certain point, I think that the film's excessive runtime starts to hurt it. Um, I, I, like, I feel like I complain about movies going too long a lot, but like, I really, I really do like really long movies. It's just the last few of them, like Babylon and John Wick Four, and this, I think, are just uh, uh, kind of bad examples of of use of of three hours. Um, again, for half the film, I, I was totally fine with the runtime. And even thought that that would be like a positive example of a three hour film where it's an art house movie, but it keeps you invested in the the plot. But during the film's second half, it, it really does start to drag. And there are like several unnecessarily long scenes, uh, one after the other, which don't seem to have much of a point, or at least the point that they have um, could have been relayed more more promptly like a big example would be the the animated sequence where Bo finds himself in the woods watching this this theater company perform and he finds himself kind of drawn into the play and it it starts to unveil like his own backstory and his own mummy issues like he starts to see himself as a, as a character within the play and that was good and it was all inter- and, and again, it was all interesting. I thought, it, like visually, it was stunning. Arias is really great at visuals, but just at at the end, it began to feel kind of pointless. It, it began to feel like, um, I mean, after you've been sitting for two hours plus, that it, it just kind of started to feel like, okay, are we gonna like, can we wrap this up? a little quicker you know like it, it started to just kind of feel it, it's uh it's runtime um another thing like there's a lot of plot twists and uh reveals towards the end which for the type of film that it is it doesn't i don't know i i don't think that they really had the impact that they would in a in a standard film because I mean, this this didn't really have a coherent story to begin with. So plot twists and those kind of things, it doesn't. Re- they don't really have much of an impact when the story doesn't make any sense in the first place. Um, and like, there's a lot to unpack and and decipher with like the film. Like, it's very much a surreal expressionist movie about like being afraid of people and having mummy issues and and all that, but. I I hate to say it, it's just it it does get kind of boring by the end because of its runtime. Unfortunately, like I, I do think it it it's it's one that'll be worth watching again, knowing um knowing how it ends, going in and seeing how that reflects um with the characters that Bo meets early on in the film, and seeing how uh just seeing like with with full context of the story. I think it's one that'll be interesting to watch, but I, I just I'm not quite in so much of a hurry to to sit through it again as I would have been had it been a bit more concise in its in its presentation. But uh, but what did you think of it, David? Yeah, I'm a lot like you actually, and what I meant earlier when I said it threw me a curveball was because I was actually really enjoying the start to this film. Mm. Um, about the the first half hour, forty five minutes, I was totally into this film and I thought wow this is a really really good look at what um anxiety and social anxiety is like for somebody and I was really really drawn into the film um yeah even perhaps like the first step of his journey I was enjoying that as well it was only once it got to that animation I thought that hang on the the wheels are starting to fall off here um Mm. I think like you said before A24 give directors free reign um that's obvious with the film films that they make and but i also think that comes with some issues because normally i would be a a huge fan of that but quite often if you're working with an experimental documentary uh sorry experimental filmmaker like ari aster um 
their imagination will run wild. Um, and I think sometimes that kind of needs to be reined in. Like um, mm. you almost wonder if the studio needed to have stepped in and said, look, we love the animation part, but can it be a little bit shorter? Because I think from that point on um, in the film, for, for, like I've, I've spoken to a few people about this that have seen the film and they've all said the same thing. The animation didn't need to be there. Um, it didn't really yeah. move the story along. Um, it didn't give us any greater insight into Bo. And I remember a, a really famous screenwriter said that to me once. When you're editing a screenplay or editing a film, the question you need to ask yourself is, does every scene need to be there? Does this move the story along? Um, and in, in that case, I would say, no, it didn't. Um, but then I think the, the finale of this film um, towards the end, it just goes into that... Uh, thing that a24 does sometimes where it's so ludicrous and so ridiculous that it's just going to lose um a lot of its audience that's even sat with it um up until that point um look i love the fact that a24 films are a little bit different that's the reason why i've loved films like midsummer um from them but it's when it goes into that bit where it's like you're really really stretching my suspension of belief right now um, that's when it starts to, um, really great with me. And, and I thought that was disappointing because like I said, I loved the first 30 to 45 minutes of this film. Um, if the rest of the film had been like the start of this film, I probably would be giving it five stars right now, but I just find that, um, and it's a shame because what kind Phoenix is absolutely brilliant in this film. All the performances in this film, um, are amazing. And even in the finale, um, that I didn't like an actor popped up that I've liked for years um, from his television work. And I was like, Oh wow. He's in, he's in this now. Um, but it was like it, he was doing a great job in a scene that I felt was just too far out there to, um, to work on screen. So yeah, it, it is an interesting film. And uh, when people have asked me about it over the last week or so, I've, I've had to say that to them. I've had to say, well, look at, it starts off great, but by the end of it, I was waiting for the final credits because I thought it really kind of overstayed its welcome. Um, but the acting's brilliant. Like I keep on finding myself saying that to people, but the acting is brilliant. Like <laughs> you could easily see Wicked Phoenix uh, winning awards for this film because of his performance. Um, but yeah, it is a, it's an interesting one. I think you've really going to have to be uh, an Ari Aster fan or a really, really devout kind of fan of obscure cinema to really want to sit through um, all of this. And like, I know a lot of people had issues with Triangle of Sadness and I love that film. Um, so yeah, it's just, we're in a weird place at the moment, I think with cinema. And I think that was probably shown um, with everything everywhere all at once winning um, Oscar for best picture, because that was another a24 film that I didn't really like, but I can understand why they gave it an Oscar. Um, but I don't know, like I kind of enjoy being in this kind of divisive era of cinema where um, you finish a film and you hate it, but your mate loves it kind of thing or the other way around. But uh, yeah, for me, I think Bowie's afraid. It, it, it needed an edit. It needed someone to step in and go, Ari, do you really, really need this scene? Because um the film is already running over long and i'm like you i don't normally notice if a film is running long but i did notice i reckon the the third hour of this film <laughs> when we were entering that um after the two hour mark i think i really yeah. really noticed um what was happening and yeah i think i even like tuned out a little bit during the animation because it was like what on earth is going on here? Yeah, it, it's one of those. It's one of those times where it's like you're watching it, and it's like, yeah, you you zone out, and when you zone back in, you realize, wait, the scene is still going. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, look, if you want to go and see Bo is Afraid, just be warned that it does go long, um, and it does have some sequences in there that might leave you scratching your head a little bit. But um yeah, definitely go along and check it out if you want to go and check it out and, and let us know what you think. But uh what are you gonna give Bowie's Afraid out of five? I'm gonna give this three and a half out of five. Uh like I say if if the second half of the film kept up the I guess the pacing of the first half, I uh, I 
might have been given this a five out of five, uh, just like you. Because, yeah, I really did enjoy that first half. I really did love that first half. But it it's... It, it, even even just the biz- how bizarre the story gets, I would still have been okay with it if I wasn't if if I didn't feel like the movie was just really um uh overindulging in its runtime. Uh yeah, so I think that that really does hurt it. So um but but three out of five for me. Other than that, it's a very it is a very interesting film um leading up to that. So yeah, three and a half out of five. Yeah, I'm giving it two and a half out of five. Um, the that third hour for me was just kind of unforgivable. After I'd loved the first part of the film, so I'm going to give it two and a half. Kyle's giving it three and a half. Like I said, go along and make up your own mind about Bo is Afraid. Um, it's showing in most cinemas, but check your local cinema guide to see where it's showing near you. You are listening to the Popcorn Conspiracy, and you're on CentralCoastRadio.com.